Hi Greedy 3Ds, today we're going to be making the Cyclops bust from Wicked Designs. It is an amazing print and I'll show you the process from printing right the way through to painting it all up. Now if you like what you see today make sure to subscribe to the channel. If you want to join my Patreon scheme you'd be more than welcome to but above all I want to hear your thoughts on what you see today. Leave me a comment, click the like button, share it with your friends and I hope you enjoy. <music> So everything has been printed on my Saturn S. This has been an absolutely fantastic printer and the quality has been amazing. As you can see there, it's the main body of the bust and the head and I've used Sunlu basic white resin and uh, I'm so impressed with Sunlu and the Saturn S. Now it's really important once your print is off, once you've cleaned it, once you have cured it, that you get it to fit properly and you're gonna need to do a little bit of pre-work here, a bit of sanding to get any of the little nubbins off that the supports have seen and also to make sure everything fits hunky-dory and once you're happy everything fits and this is the time to test fit things get some glue I use super glue there's a number of things you can use for me it's super glue and a little bit of activator just to get it to set really really quick push it in hold it in squirt it with some activator and the glue has set it is as simple as that as I say there are other options on the table but that's what I use exactly the same process for the rest of it now whether you paint it separately or all together depends on the model but because on Cyclops a lot of it is going to be the same color I'm actually just going to go with putting it all together and doing it one piece now using my usual matte black primer from Army Painter on my Timbertech airbrush and my Iowater airbrush itself to give it a layer of black all over I think it's really important that you prime it and that's how I do it and I'm doing the head exactly the same way and both of his hands now to do the main blue, I'm not going to use a spray from my airbrush, I'm going to use this Army Painter Primer and this is really really good stuff. It goes on so so quickly and the coverage is exactly the same colour as you would get on the normal Ultramarine but look at the speed that that goes on, it makes your job so much easier. Now I don't want to give it a coating all over, I want some of the black underneath to just show through to allow a little bit of the shadow effect but uh, I'm going to give it a general blast all over and again you know if you want to buy any of these paints you can get them from the description I'll put a link in there I am an Amazon affiliate as I often say and if you want to buy from my channel it really would be appreciated it won't cost you any more money but a little bit kicks back to the channel and just helps me carry on doing what I'm doing now demonic yellow for the gloves and this is part of the mega set by the army painter and I'm just giving both gloves a bit of a blast all over I'll do a little bit more on them in a bit and for the face of Cyclops, I'm using a base of Nomad Flesh. Now, I always use Nomad Flesh, you know that. But it's a great darker base, which I can then highlight a little bit later on. And that's what he looks like with his first layer on. And Wildling Flesh is the higher tone. And I'm going to just give it a shot from the top down as if the sunlight is touching certain areas, but not all of him. And it just adds to the shading effect on the skin. And, and that's all I'm really going to do with the skin on this. It's as simple as that. Now, using some console blue, uh, this is a natural part of the triad for the ultramarine blue, which I've used for the main body. As you can see, I'm just going to concentrate on some of the higher areas of muscles where I want the shadows not to be. I want it to highlight so I'm going to do the outer edges of his muscles I'm just going to follow the line down there as you can see I'm going to do a little bit on his leg and a little bit on his back and I just want to add to the contrast of the blue I just don't want it to be one simple shade of blue and don't forget the primers coming through as well so you'll see a little bit of that And as a complete contrast using Omega Blue, which is the darkest of the triad, I'm going to go into the darker points of him. So you'll see me go into the centre of his chest there, underneath his muscles, underneath his arms, and places where it's going to be a little bit darker by default due to shadowing. Thank you. 
Now to seal everything and protect it, I'm using this Rust-Oleum clear sealant. It's really important that once you've done a piece of work, especially when you've got something and you're happy with, seal it so your fingers aren't gonna pull that paint off when you go through all the next stages and you're protecting your work. I'm gonna protect that skin also because I'm gonna do a little bit more to the head, obviously, and I don't want the skin coming off on my fingers. Using some imp yellow now, it's a lighter tone, and I'm just gonna to touch up the gloves a little bit just to give them a little bit of a two-tone shade. Now I've masked off his head and I'll leave a link to this masking tape in the description. It's quite thin masking tape and it's good for things like this. And I'm going back to the spray, the ultramarine uh, rattle can, and I'm just gonna give his face exactly the same layer. Now I've moved on now while that's drying to the uh, rocks and I've printed them off already and I'm gonna stick them together using super glue and activator exactly the same way as I did with everything else. This is the moment I like. I've left the sound effect on. I'm peeling it away. And you can see there that the skin tones have been well protected and the blue is on and that looks fantastic. A tiny bit of touching up needed, but there always is. So using some of this uh, Games Master Terrain Primer um, from the Army Painter again, it's not black, it's like a greeny black, it's really lovely. And again, there'll be a link in the description if you want to get yourself some. I'm going to spray it across the rocks and that's the base colour done now. A lot of people do rocks by mixing black, white and a bit of yellow. This is the colour you kind of get when you do that, so I've cut out the middle now. now off to the printer again, and here's the base that I've printed off in two parts. Everything has come off really, really wonderfully. So, so pleased with the Saturn S, and my settings have allowed it, thankfully, 30 second exposure time. Look at that, it just pops off easily. And that's again with the Sunlu resin, a 2.5 second exposure on my system, and everything's working really well. If you have a bit of trouble getting the supports off, and I do use heavy supports, I've got to be honest, a little bit of hairdryer, and off they pop. Give it a bit of a clean in your IPA. Give it a blast, cure it with your UV. And then once that's happened, a little bit of prep work, sanding down some of the nubbins and making it fit nice and, and nice and tight. Bit of super glue, bit of that activator again, and the base is done. I use a little bit of wood sealer, wood filler um, from Ron Seal normally, and this just to cover any of those little gaps. And really good stuff, sets really well. Right, terrain flesh. I'm just using this with my magnification goggles, and if you want a pair of these, guess what? Yeah, you're right. You can get them from the description. These are fantastic. I'm just going to go around the edge of that where there's a tiny little bit of overspill of blue using a really tiny brush. Now I've been gifted some brushes, and I'll talk about them a little bit later, and I'll tell you where you can get them from. So I'm using some of that Nocturna paint there from the uh, Fairy Flesh set. I mixed it with a little bit of skin colour, a little bit of white, a little bit of red, and I'm going to do the tongue. I want like a pinky colour for the tongue. I don't want it red, I don't want it white, I just want a nice pink colour. And now I've got the tongue done, I'm just going to mix a little bit more white in to make it a little bit paler, and I'm going to go around his lips. Now that's not going to be the last colour on the lips, it looks a little bit too pink at this stage, but I will put other colours on there, and once the teeth are in as well, that will bring down the lips a little bit. There's the teeth going in. Now I'm just using white for this. You could do a bit of skeleton bone. You could mix white with a little bit of cream, but I'm just putting white on. I just think uh, this, the size of this model and the color scheme would dictate that white will be good. And I'm making sure I get all the back teeth as well. And there you can see the tongue color, the lip color, and now the teeth. Now when I highlight the lips, with a little bit of skin colour and a little bit of white, you add that shadow onto them and that's the final lip effect before obviously I put some varnish on. Now while I've got the red out, I'm just gonna go along his laser visor there. I wanna give that a nice shiny coat of red and I'm putting that on first because the next layer will be gold and any mistakes, any overspill will be covered by the gold. And that's the gold that I'm using. It's Imperial Gold from Army Painter. And I'm just gonna go over his visor. It's gonna take a couple of layers, but I'm just putting the first layer on his visor at the moment. And that's what he looks like so far. Now 
and some leather brown for his hair. I'm going to give him a base layer of brown and I'm using one of these brushes. Again, the link will be in the description. I've used these brushes a few times. They were gifted to me, um, but I've got to be honest, they're, they're about 12 quid for 10. So you'd think they'd be cheap and nasty, but they're not. They're really, really nice brushes. You can get them from the description and um, I wouldn't recommend them to you guys if I hadn't used them many, many times and they're still holding their shape. There's not, they're not falling apart. They're not, um, they're not breaking apart at all. And the wooden bits, the, the handles are really lovely so yep grab yourself some of them not very expensive and uh, they're doing a grand grand job so far for me now the brown is going all over his hair as you can see there and that's what he looks like with his hair on we'll do a bit more work on that later once that's dried So I'm going to go back to demonic yellow and I'm going to do all the yellow bits. This was an absolute labour of love. It took me many, many hours of delicate painting and I'm definitely not going to put you through all of it. But it's really important. You just get yourself comfortable and try and clear your head, make yourself a coffee, put some music on in the background and take your time and enjoy the painting process. That's the first layer on. It's going to take at least another two, maybe three layers to get that yellow covered. And I'm going now back to the hair with some hardened leather speed paint from the Army Painter. And uh, I love speed paints. Anyone that watches my videos knows that I love them. And I'm just going to give his hair a, a blast over with the speed paint. It's a good contrast paint that will bring out the highs and lows in his hair. And there you go. That's what his hair looks like. There's a little bit of touching up to do. So don't worry if you think I've missed a couple of bits. That's, uh, that's about three quarters of the way through. Now I've used some rough iron for the next stage. And I didn't catch this bit on video. But you can see that I've done all the other bits on him that aren't yellow on his back belts and uh, I love the rough iron a lovely lovely metallic paint it covers really really well and that's just one layer believe it or not don't forget do the uh, little metal parts around his hands in exactly the same color And now for the X on his uh, on his emblem, I'm just using some pure red paint and I'm take, taking my time here and I'm going to give it two coats across the, uh, the red there. First on the top part of him and secondly down below on his belt. And now just to touch up the hands a little bit, I'm using a big dry brush with some demonic yellow and I'm just giving them another layer of yellow just to add a little bit more contrast and a little bit of interest. You can see the shadows, you can see the highlights and the lowlights now. Some desert highlight for his hair and this is the last stage on his hair. I just want to make his hair look a little bit shiny, a little bit of a, a contrast really. We've got darks, we've got lights, we've got mediums and that will be his hair done once those highlights are on. There we go, that's what his hair looks like. Taking a little bit of silver and I'm going to use an almost a dry brush technique with just a small brush just to look at all that bronze work and just touch it up with a little bit of silver just to give it a little bit of a battered look, a little bit of a, a little bit of texture. Taking my time with this bit and just gently with a little bit of paint on the brush touching all areas. you can see what that looks like now I've also gone over the stitching on his belt with some of those cavern highlights and doing the stitching makes such a difference took me a while but well worth it and using that same cavern highlight color I've just gone around the edges on his uh, utility belt just to make them look a little bit battered and take some soft tone again it's an army painter wash just to touch certain areas on his belt again just to add another color to it and again across the uh, the strap work just some wash on there just to make it look a little bit different now for the base I'm using some desert effects on a big fat dry brush with a makeup brush and uh, you'll see that what it does now straight over that base primer with this highlight just looks amazing for rocks really really easy to do 
dry brushing. I'm sure most of you know what dry brushing is. Um, there is a video of mine you can have a look at in the library if you're not quite sure about dry brushing, but doing things like rocks this way is absolutely amazing. And once you've gone over that, what I then do is I'll take a white, a nice pure white, and I do exactly the same, get some on the dry brush and just touch the edges to give it that final um, je ne sais quoi really, just to highlight it a little bit further. And that's done, the rocks are finished. Using some gloss varnish, this is Vallejo gloss varnish. I've loaded my brush and I'm gonna get it all inside his mouth, everywhere in there, across his tongue, his cheeks, right across his teeth and the bottom of the top of his lips as well. And while that's out, I'm also just gonna go over the, uh, the red laser bit on his visor just to make that look like it's glass. Using some rough iron back on my airbrush for the base, I'm just giving the base a blast over with rough iron. Once that's dried, I gave it a dry brush with a little bit of silver, I painted the X red, and that's pretty much everything done. Now I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen today. I hope you enjoy the final process. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.